In this strange and unpredictable market, we want to find our way and feel confident in our participation through the fundamentals. We're going to stick to that. We're not going to deviate too far from that. Thus, we're not necessarily focusing on where the market can, should, or will go. That is quite out in the open, and there's a lot of possibilities there. There's a lot of blur, and it's hard to see. But the fundamentals are quite clear to see, and we can benefit from those fundamentals regardless of what happens in the broader market. So what are these fundamentals we're talking about? Well, today we saw very hot consumer price index increases of 5.4%. And for the earlier part of this year and basically all of last year, the consensus was inflation is transitory. It's gonna have this little bump and it's gonna come right back down. Well, that notion is objectively false. Um, we've had hot levels like this since about February consistently and increasing. Um, and it looks like there's no end in sight. Yesterday, we had Fed, Fed member Bostic say inflation is not transitory. This is a big change in tone from the Federal Reserve and something we must take note of. It seems to me like we're going to continue seeing these levels and the people who had said it was going to be less or transitory are incorrect and i'm not trying to cast any shade or hate on that we are all incorrect about certain aspects of the market at times but we must adjust and realize that this is a little bit more persistent and sticky and I believe much more is to yet to continue. And I'm saying this without saying some sort of German hyperinflation events going to occur. However, there are a lot of obvious parallels and I'm just going to go over those real quick and then go over what's more specific to this situation. So in German hyperinflation, the, the French and the Belgians occupied much of the means of production, the factories, etc., of the German economy. This was because Germany couldn't make its second and third war, World War I reparations payments. So Germany said once the means of production were occupied, hey, German workers, don't go to work. We're going to pay you not to work. That's very similar to what happened here. People were getting paid not to work and hyperinflation ensued. We've seen a similar situation, although less exacerbated, I would say. Um, it seems like a larger percentage of our workforce, which is not entirely in the goods and means of production category. Um, a lot of people have remained in the workforce. However, there have been some off. So I think we're going to have an aspect of that hyperinflation, even though we might not call it hyperinflation and might just call it inflation as is seemingly becoming more consensus in the market to acknowledge what we're having as inflation. However, I don't think it's done yet. We've seen these effects and the forces, the money printing, the uh, easy monetary policy, the low interest rates, the stimulus checks go on for some time. Um, you know, it's been well over a year now, about a year and a half, and there's more yet to come with no end in sight. Yes, we're starting to see a little bit of an end in sight and taper. But we're also seeing another massive stimulus package. So why does this matter? Why, why does it matter specifically? Well, what we're seeing now is not the effects of what happened last month. What we're seeing now is the effects of what happened last year. These forces, when they occur in the economy, take a long time to play out in the data. So we've got a whole lot of catching up. We've seen a couple months of this. We've got about 15 months plus that has to be seen. And we've got multiple more months left to go of it. And uh, who knows about the culmination of it all having its own kind of effect, you know, 40% increase to the money supply. We're just starting to see that. 
So there's certainly a uh, reason to believe that inflation is going to continue. Now that is a thing. Um, we can play that. We can, we, there's plenty of, op of opportunities to take advantage of that. We talked about some yesterday. For example, mining and material stocks. We named a couple, BHP, G-O-L-D. These companies produce essential goods um, that the economy will consume and pay dividends and have cash flow that will adjust with inflation. So we can buy these stocks at an incredible valuation and hold and sit regardless of what happens in the economy, as long as there's not deflation, but we don't see that happening. Even if there is some sort of industrial revolution where labor goes away. Materials, commodities, in my opinion, they are the winners going forward. So materials and mining companies we like. A couple of names mentioned. We have more, but those are for the inside members. Feel free to hit me up personally if you'd like to discuss what an inside member actually is. In addition, we like energy stocks. Um, it's no surprise that pump prices have gone up. However, we're also experiencing record high energy consumption. There's been a massive flight to the suburbs. There have been aggressive purchasing of cars. This has all led to a new paradigm in which there's more driving, less public transportation, and ultimately more energy consumption. You throw growing international economies on top of that and you've got a complex of too much demand not enough supply because the producers are afraid of hostile governments towards fossil fuels and the coming green wave so they're not investing in new production why would they do that they don't want to do that it's not a good investment what's a better investment is putting the cash in the shareholders hands and by owning these stocks, that means us. However, the fears that they have, while seem to be consensus and common, don't seem to be 100% accurate. However, they are priced, these stocks, as if they are 100% accurate. The EIA expects oil to be the top fuel and energy source until at least 2050 with the overall energy consumption going up 50%. So that's 29 years down the line. Exxon Mobil is trading as if it's going away in 10 years. Plus, it's got about a five and change dividend. It's a great stock if you ask me. That dividend can go up, that amount of years can go down. So I'm still owning these energy stocks. And talking more about energy today, we saw the price per barrel down quite substantially this morning as the Russian Putin was talking about energy production possibly increasing for Europe and fears, of course, with more production, falling price. However, at the same time, there are two price figures he mentioned, which should help guide us. They are planning to sell natural gas to Europe at eight to nine dollars per unit versus the five and change we're paying per unit here in the United States. And that is a significant increase from where we are here in the United States. It's almost double. In addition, he expects $100 oil. That is 25% higher than here and would make energy companies very, very profitable. So the short term decline remains short term as energy brought itself back up to the flat line, still holding above 80, and we will see what happens as time goes on. These are very good areas of the market, in my opinion, to be in. Now, inflation. Um, we got that big number today, 5.4%. The market is acting in a very strange way, and that's why we're sticking away from broader market predictions. What exactly is strange? Well, when you got a bond, right? And you expect to get cash back in the future. If the value of that cash goes down though, you don't want that bond as much. You would demand a higher rate of return to hold it. Today, we got news that the value of the dollar, the purchasing power of the dollar is going down because the prices are going up. However, bond yields fell. That's quite strange. And I don't know if that's sustainable. 
I know we know the bond picture is a very manipulated market. However, it's gotta, it's gotta change, it's gotta rationalize as every other aspect of the economy always seems to do. So with bonds priced well below, well, well below the rate of inflation, we begin to question what will happen with that and what will it mean for stocks. And we'll just discuss the broader market for a second. The broader market does not like rising bond yields. However, as far as I'm concerned and aware, the market has been able to pass on costs and adjust quite well for inflation. These companies are seemingly to do, seeming to do all right despite increases in input prices. Output prices are rising too. This is what we have believed on this channel, that inflation would be a lift all boats event. So we're remaining in that state of mind. There are people who say inflation is bad for the market. Maybe they're right, maybe we're right. We'll only know in hindsight. We're remaining bullish. However, we acknowledge the potential for serious impacts to the market through rising bond yields if they get high enough. And particularly on what others call growth stocks, but we do not refer to it as growth stocks. We would just refer to them as mega cap tech, call it like it is. Growth is a debatable term, at least we are bringing up that debate. And we believe growth stocks are low price, high growth companies that have the potential of 10X. So, hope that made sense to you. That's it for today. Feel free to ask questions below. And until now, oh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and subscribe. And until next time, peace out.